Hey everybody, and welcome back to Erlengrot. It is late summer, and we have finished up our wheat harvest. Brought in about 170, 180 some bales of straw off our four fields, and uh, sold all of the crop straight to market. I think we made about, I don't know, $50,000 or so. Of course, storing all of the straw because we are going to need it for our cows. Uh, let's take a quick look at the finance screen once we have filled our hopper with canola. And get that pipe out. We've already gotten one field of canola harvested off. It was about 30,000 liters worth. Got this field and two more fields to bring off. As far as our canola goes, that is. And looking at the weather forecast, we've got sunny skies all the way into early autumn. We shouldn't have any issue at all getting our crops off the field. In fact, I don't know if we're going to get it all done today, but my goal is to have all of our canola up off the field by the end of today. Let's go ahead and take a look at that finance screen. So, as far as harvest sold, uh, we had $17,000 in wheat sold the first day we harvested. $38,000, almost $39,000, basically. In wheat the second day. So if we look at that, 39,000 and then 17,000. So that's 49,000. That's 56, about 56, 57,000 dollars in wheat income. Uh, so far today, we made 13,000 dollars in canola sales. That is doing pretty good. Milk production has risen once again. It's good to see. That pipe put back. Yes, I did indeed. Go back and look at that finance screen. I see milk production is about $25,000 a day. Here we were, here we were about $20,000 a day, $21,000 a day, and then 25, 24, and 24. So rocking it pretty good there. We need to get our corn off of the field right there by the farm so that we can uh, put down another cow shed. Gonna need, gonna need the storage. That is for sure. For our cows going into the next year, if we were playing the next year, that's what I want to do. I want to kind of end the series as if we were still playing the series. We're not gonna sell off our animals. We're not gonna sell off all our stuff. It's gonna finish harvest, and that's my plan to close out this series, is to finish our canola harvest in a video, finish our corn harvest, and finish our sunflower harvest and see where we're at. Really, that's, that's, that's my goal. We've got enough hay. We don't need to make any more hay enough silage we don't need to make any more silage uh, we would have enough hay and silage to get us through winter into next spring anyway so we don't need to really worry about that uh, which I'll probably put down a building I probably will put down a building once we get the cornfield cleared off uh, but then we're gonna be saying goodbye to Erling Rock it's been fun three years of play we've definitely more than doubled our animals at this point. 
as far as our cows go. We started with, I think, 100, and, 100 cattle uh, as far as in our milking barn. And now we have 200 calves in our calf barn. And we have um, almost 200 in our milking barn. I mean, the first set of calves that need to go out of the calf barn and into their own shed because they're going to start next spring being ready for artificial insemination. Uh, we've really, really increased our cattle herd. Flipped over 180 pigs. At this point, we're on our third batch of 60 pigs. Uh, sheep have been okay. You know, we've, we've sold off the lambs as they've come. Sold off wool. The sheep aren't really big economic performers. The big economic performers are the, the dairy cows. Chickens are chickens. They, they honestly, they might as well not even exist. They require so little effort to, uh, to keep. They also put out so little product that you could go an entire year and then pick up the egg boxes and make a couple thousand dollars. That's about it. But uh, they are fairly light maintenance, so you know there is that. Now I was thinking if and when I do another gameplay series I might just try to do a series where I am uh, in first person perspective all the time no uh, no third person no view like this but I'd give it a go where maybe all I did was uh, was do in cap stuff only drove like this be interested to know what you all think about that idea I know it would provide a bit of a challenge for some things it would probably um, dictate the types of equipment I would pick I don't think I'd go for anything super huge as far as header width because I wouldn't be able to see you know the headers the edge of the headers so well um, yeah I'm thinking maybe maybe do a series where I attempt to play in first person on everything but in all honesty the uh, the pre-recorded series is going to take a hiatus for a little while. Uh, Erlengrot is going to be the last pre-recorded series that we do on the channel for some period of time. And um, that's basically because of just the time involved. So it took, it took me literally about five hours of gameplay to, to harvest those four wheat fields, bale the straw, collect the straw for 30 minutes, 25 minutes of, of recording. Five hours. The return on investment just is not there. I could have done in the same five hours three map videos. I could have done probably a half dozen um, mod mod new and noteworthy videos um, so yeah it's just it's just a time investment it's a lot easier to do early on in the series uh, but the way I like to do the series is I just I'd just rather not do seven videos in a row of me doing the same thing just because it's going to take me seven or eight hours to, uh, to progress you know, the gameplay uh, here with our animals. It takes me a fair bit of time. Even when I am just
There we go. Uh, it takes me a fair bit of time, even when I'm just skipping through the days. It probably takes 30, 30 minutes to, uh, to get all the animals fed, cleaned up, and everything. And then fast forward to the next game day, another 30, 35 minutes. So, you know, even to skip through four or five game days is two and a half hours of real life work just to skip through some game days uh, with animals. If you didn't do animals, then it'd be pretty easy. Wake up, fast forward, sleep, wake up, fast forward, sleep, and you're done, right? So I'm just going to kind of sit back and think, what do I want to get done? What do I want to get accomplished on the channel? Um, I'm not 100% focused on view counts, but you can't you can't deny looking at what, what are the biggest performers on the channel and doing things that take away from your ability to produce the type of content that performs best. On the channel is is counterproductive. So the biggest performers on the channel are map videos, and then second to that are uh, are mod videos and kind of the how-to instructional informative series. And a lot of those views aren't short-term views; they're more or long-term, long-term investment views on a lot of those how-to style videos, as well as the mod reviews. I get a good number of mod review videos that I did two years ago are still getting a decent amount of play time. So I can't really say the same for play series. Let's play series. They start out, start out with some decent interest and some decent uh, view counts, decent viewer engagement with respect to, oops, with respect to comments and such. Uh, but then, as the uh, play series progresses, beyond probably five, ten videos, uh, the view counts drop pretty significantly. Uh, comments, viewer engagement drops pretty significantly. The point where it's it's do I how much effort do I put in for uh, for the return compared to in you know, the map videos or new and noteworthies or the how to series. I'm spending five hours trying to get through to the next video how much of that time could have been spent thinking about planning or producing a uh, an informal informative how-to video on something or how much of that time could have been spent you know researching and digging into uh, some maps to uh, to present things like that so that's what I said. Erlengrot is going to be going away very soon. Enjoy the time on the map. Like the map a lot. Very nice map for being a giant's map. Uh, for the folks that discounted it so early on, really feel that uh, well. You can do what you want to do. You want you can think the way you want to think, but really think that uh, folks that discounted the map early on really did themselves a disfavor. Lots of very interesting things on the map that are of note uh, to look forward to future maps from modders, assets that are going to be pulled out of this map and used in other places like these big grain elevator cell points. If you can see them, no, you can't see them. There's one behind me at this moment. Uh, the animal dealer building, you know, this dock. Lots of really great assets can be pulled out of this map and used in other maps in future farm sim releases. Uh, the idea of having individual trees off in the view distance is a great idea. 
Um, they're 2D trees. It'd be nicer if they were more 3D trees, but I suspect that was done for uh, try to optimize and uh, and keep the gameplay decent for uh, for console players. You got to design things for your least capable systems, and at this point, that is going to be the previous gen consoles. Let's see if we can line this up. This is going to be... If we do a series in the future where we're just first person, this is often going to be probably the hardest thing to do. Get things lined up. see the shadow uh, too close there we go let's see how bad we are yeah I was too close the whole time oh that's so funny So let's get this ready to go and uh, set up on the next field. Reversing camera would be so nice. And uh, fill this up with our uh, wheat harvest and fill it up again. For granola harvest. Five hundred seventy five dollar fuel for the fuel bill. So like this building right here. Um, like, yeah, this building right here would be a really cool building. To uh, see folks export out. Here we have our two canola fields, five and six. Trailer off here and Not a lot of room there to uh, to 
get started on the field. That's something else I need to try to remember to do during my gameplay is just open up fields or leave a bit of area around uh, field entrances that they are a bit easier to get in and out of. Especially if I'm going to be doing a series where it's all first person stuff. Lined up on this and hire a helper and we'll run down here. See how much grain we have in our tank or in our trailer. Giants even did a really good job with the ambient sounds on the map. Alright, so 25,000. We can hold about. 5,000 more. Go empty that harvester and see. Nola, 599. 32. 36. We'll go to the grain mill again. Like I said, we've spent enough time selling at the um, Fellsburn train. I'm willing to willing to lose a little bit of money, a little potential profit, and uh, basically go to somewhere else. We'll just sit here and wait on our harvester get back so that we can then unload the pipe on his down trip well, let me know in the comments what do you think if we did a play series at some point in the future uh, that the next play series be a 100% um, first person perspective series I think it'd be interesting and be a bit more difficult uh, than your normal type series. It might appeal to a smaller, more niche audience. But, uh, but hey, if it keeps the gameplay interesting, right? Interesting and challenging. Another difficult thing is going to be not only lining up the pipe from in the harvester, but trying to line up the pipe from within a chase vehicle. Might be a bit interesting. Make the use of uh, cruise control.
it came down here, there's no fence. And a lot easier access to the fields that way. Go up here the gray mill this direction. I think this will work better. See a nice big harvested wheat field here. So we're going to need to put down at least one building, if not two buildings, in our cornfield. We're going to lose a little bit of cornfield there. Good luck. From there, you can see our full haste, our full straw stack. We've got a little bit of straw. Can't really see on the other stack. Well, the canola experiment is a success. It's a fair bit of time investment to. Uh, Plant in one summer and harvest in the following summer. But I have to say, pulling out thirteen thousand dollars for thirty thousand liters of canola is about twice as profitable as uh, wheat was. Of course, we didn't hold on to the grain. If we'd have held on to it, we would have. Been able to probably reap a better reward from both crops, actually. Will we get off of this one? Watch that money tick up. And we have earned $16,000. $29,000 between basically two fields of canola. There is pretty good return on investment, I think. So guys, that is going to do us for another episode here on Erling Rot. Thanks for coming out and watching. Tune in next time to do Harvest Season Year 3, Part 3. Will it be coin or, sorry, will it be corn or sunflowers? Will the coin figure out what it might be? Tune in next time. Find out. Happy farming, everybody. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.